Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as we get started here, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. Really appreciate the time that you take to come and spend with me. Plus, I really appreciate how you are, are really putting a lot of effort into this. I know that it's it's a big deal getting ready for the NPT. I want you to know that that I appreciate you. Appreciate all the work you put into it. So today I've got a practice question for you as we go through the FSBPT's content outline. Today is related to the neuromuscular and nervous system. This is the second largest system on the exam, somewhere between 39 and 48 questions here. So clearly one of the large systems of the exam. Now, this question on its face does seem like a straightforward question, but it tests a couple of concepts and it's important to recognize that. So uh, I guess you'll see this type of a question come up on exam day where there won't be a lot of STEM. There's not going to be a lot of, of preamble or ex, extra content there. But if you understand the principle behind, they can test a lot of material very, very quickly. And that's, again, that's the purpose of a lot of these test questions is to make sure that you can understand and integrate a number of these concepts ready for exam day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. I will read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. All right, here we go. Which of the following conditions is most likely present in a patient with exaggerated cutaneous reflexes? So which of the following conditions is most likely present in a patient with exaggerated cutaneous reflexes? One, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Two, poliomyelitis. Three, radiculopathy. Or four, spinal cord injury. So which of the following conditions is most likely present in a patient with exaggerated cutaneous reflexes? One, Guillain-Barre syndrome, two, poliomyelitis, three, radiculopathy, or four, spinal cord injury. So this question, albeit rather rather brief, does test a couple of concepts. So the first thing is you have to understand what a cutaneous reflex is. Probably the simplest, easiest one we remember is called the plantar reflex, often referred to as Babinski reflex. That's where you stroke the, cutane, stroke the skin, the integumentary system, on the plantar surface of the foot and you get a motor response. That is a cutaneous reflex. Uh, the, there are several of them. There's the abdominal reflex. There's the, the what is it, the anal wink reflex. There's uh, the cremasteric reflex. All of these are cutaneous reflexes that elicit a muscular reaction or reflex in relation to the, the integumentary input. So in this case, we're looking for something that has an exaggerated cutaneous reflex. So if you know that upper motor neuron symptoms, upper motor neuron syndromes, I should say, or upper motor neuron conditions are likely to result in exaggerated reflexes, both deep tendon reflexes, as well as cutaneous reflexes, then you'll quickly identify that the correct answer here is a spinal cord injury. Hyperreflexia is one of the key characteristics of someone who has a spinal cord injury. This is classified as an upper motor neuron lesion. So all things considered, the we've got the upper motor neuron lesion, which is usually classified as something that is, is a disorder of the cerebral cortex, the basal ganglia, the cerebellum, or the spinal cord. A lot of these, well, almost categorically, all of these will be classified as upper motor neuron symptoms or upper motor neuron lesions, so to speak. So a spinal cord injury, this is likely to result in hyperreflexia, clonus, or exaggerated cutaneous reflexes. Now these other conditions, Guillain-Barre syndrome, poliomyelitis, and radiculopathy, these are all classified as lower motor neuron lesions. And so Guillain-Barre syndrome, also known as acute inflammatory demyelating polyneuropathy, this is gonna result in a lower motor neuron pathology, hyporeflexivity, hypotonia. Poliomyelitis, same thing, attacking the anterior horn cell in the spinal cord. So I guess in that sense, it is in the spinal canal, but it is the the beginning of the lower motor neuron pathway. So polio likely to result in the hyporeflexia. And then finally, radiculopathy. This is where you have uh, some type of, of damage or, or pinching that's going on at the nerve root level. So radiculopathy also going to result in lower motor neuron, as a lower motor neuron condition. So all things considered, the only one here that's even remotely close to an upper motor neuron disorder is the spinal cord injury. Now, this is always, and I, I think I've mentioned this a few times, but just of note, remember, someone with a spinal cord injury, they have significant weakness, but it is technically an upper motor neuron disorder. And so if you are able to do uh, tonal testing or reflex testing, 
you'll likely see the upper motor neuron symptoms such as hyperflexia, possibly clonus, or exaggerated cutaneous reflexes as the, the, li the likely result there. So there you go. Again, the question was, which of the following conditions is most likely to be pre or is most likely present in a patient with exaggerated cutaneous reflexes? The correct answer there is spinal cord injury, which is an upper motor neuron lesion. These other answer options, Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, poliomyelitis, and radiculopathy are all lower motor neuron pathologies. So there you go, short and sweet today. Hey, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out PT Final Exam. We've got a lot of ongoing courses. So as we head into the April and July rounds for 2025, we, we've got the most up-to-date content. We've got a huge question bank. I think you'll really like that. A quiz builder feature, that's super fun. So if you, and I, I talk to students all the time, the number one evidence-based strategy for attacking a, an exam like this, a standardized exam, is to do lots and lots of practice questions. So that practice questions, especially practice questions in a test environment where you're not looking at the answer until after you've taken it and committed to it, that is the number one evidence-based way to make sure you are prepared for this standardized exam. So very much recommend that. We've got our VIP course. That's the one that I personally run where we go through all of the content on the FSBPT's content outline. We have more abbreviated courses like the independent study course or a crash course if you just need the, the key, the critical area content to make sure you're ready to go for the exam. Uh, plus, like I said, we've got six practice exams in an exam simulator. I think, I think you'll find our resources, um, I think you'll find them pretty awesome. That's my goal, and I've been doing this for over a decade now, helping people pass their exam, not just pass it, but actually just totally dominate on exam day. Like the results for the January exam are just coming in. Just today, I was, I was messaging, well, we had a half a dozen students that I was just messaging moments ago about their their successful NPT results. They were able to able to pass the exam. A lot of these folks on a multiple attempt. So again, it's one of the things that, that uh, we really, really are passionate about, getting you the score you deserve, giving you the tools you need on test day so that you can just walk in and dominate the exam. Because let's be honest, this is a test that's, it's no joke. It's one that you want to get done, one and done and be out of there. And so we try to give you all the tools that you need so you can absolutely dominate on exam day. All right, we'll bring it to a conclusion. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, everyone. If I, if I do see, if those of you listening to this that are headed to CSM, be sure to stop by our booth. We've got some freebies we're giving away. So CSM in Houston, 2025. Uh, if you are stopping by, be sure to, to stop in and say hello. Uh, we've got some freebies we'll be giving you there. So take care of yourselves. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.